This is George from iTech Legion, and I'm sitting here with two Noctua coolers that are probably very, very familiar looking. However, in today's day and age, with small form factor becoming more popular and a huge shift over to ITX uh, mainboards, compatibility has become more of an issue. RAM, of course, is also still an issue, but some of the manufacturers still sticking giant heat sinks on for no reason. Um, but it's become less of an issue than it was, but still a concern for many. Really, the shift to the ITX motherboards has become huge as you need uh, clearance of that PCI slot. Now, Noctua has actually updated the NHC 15 and the NHC 14. They're two most powerful coolers in order to become more uh, friendly to ITX motherboards. We're going to take a look at them, the NHC 15S and the NHC 14S. Getting our first look at the NHD 15S. Now, how exactly would you take an NHD 15 and make it more compatible? Well, really, uh, the answer was pretty simple in what Noctua did. First, you know, take a look at the box. Standard Noctua packaging. Looks just like an NHD 15 box. Uh, a couple of specifics on here. Still 165 millimeters tall. Still exactly the same fin package. 150 millimeters wide. Still weighs in at 1150 grams with one fan on it. Now, the NHD 15S only comes with one fan, center fan. It is an NFA 15 PWM, 1500 RPM, at only 24.6 dBA. Uh, same fan the NHD 15 comes with, but you're only getting one, only the center position. Now, one of the things about this, let's get the box out of the way and take a look at the NHD 15S itself. Okay, now getting close up. Now, you know, the first thing I said, same fin stacks, 150 millimeters wide, 135 millimeters deep, exactly the same. So how did they improve compatibility? Well, first off, you've only got the center fan. You don't have a front fan, so that improves your RAM compatibility. You've got 65 millimeters of clearance, but that's still the same as the NHD 15 uh, with the front fan off. So what else did they do? Simple. Take a look. The entire unit is simply offset to the side. This is going to give you clearance on the first PCI slot on an ITX motherboard. Other than that, there's really no difference between the 15 and the 15S. It's merely offset. You've still got the same six 6 millimeter heat pipes. You've still got that same nickel finished copper base. Uh, you've still got the uh, absolutely impeccable soldering job. Um, it is absolutely, positively the same cooler shifted over for compatibility. Now, some people are going to say, well, you know, you shift it over, it's not going straight up, you're throwing the offset off, it's going to affect um, performance. Not the case. Uh, as we've seen prior in uh, a couple of other coolers that have uh, tried this approach, it really does not affect the cooling performance whatsoever, and that's exactly what we found in our testing. It, the performance was absolutely identical to the NHD 15 in every way, shape, and form. Um, with one fan. Added the second fan, it was exactly the same. No difference in cooling performance, just a big difference in compatibility. So now you can actually go with something like an NHD 15S, uh, or I should say you can actually go with an NHD 15 in the form of a 15S on an ITX motherboard, still use your first PCI slot, have 65 millimeters of RAM clearance. I mean, really, what more could you ask for? It's um, fantastic the way it's put together. Now. The NFA 15, as always, held in with the standard Noctua fan clips. And nobody does fan clips better than Noctua. It makes it uh, easier to get in and out. Now, some people, of course, aren't you know, thrilled about the color. But you know, once it's in there, really, what's the difference? Uh, all you're going to see is the top sticking out of the middle. So standard NFA 15, 1500 RPM, like I say, one of the quietest fans around. Uh, moves a great amount of air with very, very little noise. It's also a very smooth sounding fan. You know, uh, dB is really not the only measurement of uh, how a fan performs uh, acoustically. There is a definite difference in how smooth the sound is, also as in pitch. And the Noctua fans have an absolutely perfect pitch. They use SSO bearing, so they're very, very smooth throughout the um, RPM range that they operate in. And you get a nice very gentle sound, you know, compared to uh, many other fans. No whining, no um, huffing, and 
really just a great experience. Now the tower itself, like I said, absolutely positively identical to an NHD 15, and that's a good thing in this case. It's the top performing cooler on our charts, along with the Cryo Rig R1. Uh, the two go neck and neck all the time. And now with this piece, they're going neck and neck with the Cryo Rig R1 Universal, which also uses a bit of an offset and gets set back. But um, this actually has more clearance for ITX boards than the R1 Universal does, so it does have a bit of an advantage there. So really, phenomenal job by Noctua here uh, in putting it together. Now we are going to take a look at how this goes in the case and take a look at the performance numbers. Noctua uses the Secufirm 2 mounting kit for both the D15S and the C14S. And uh, the D15S comes in one box, the 14S comes in three separate boxes. The difference is really uh, merely to accommodate the shape of the boxes that they're shipped in, um, but they are exactly the same components within each one. Taking a look now, you get everything you need for AMD or Intel mounting. Uh, it fits Intel 1150 series or 2011, including V3. AMD, you're going to have AM2, AM3, as well as FM1, FM2, uh, plus or no plus, all the same mounting there. You get excellent instructions for both. Uh, one thing to keep in mind also, when you are doing an AMD mount, you will need the factory backplate that your motherboard came with in order to mount it. But as you go through, as you can see, well illustrated, very easy to follow instructions. Also a very, very easy mount to begin with. Moving past that, your Intel set packed separately with the retention bars and tie downs. AMD set, a little bit simpler because you're going to be using the factory backplate, like I said. Intel backplate for 1150 series. Moving over into the accessories. Got a tube of NTH1, low noise adapter, fan clips, and of course, Noctua badge. I'm actually going to be doing an uh, Intel 1150 series mount today, which has the most steps involved. Uh, now, I do want to point out though, take a quick look. If you're doing an AMD, very simply, screw goes through the retention bracket. Spacer goes on, and you'll screw right into the back plate of your motherboard, and you'll wind up with your two retention brackets on. Now, if you're doing uh, an Intel 11 or 2011 series, whether it be uh, regular 2011 or V3, you've got your standoff, which will screw into the factory back plate, and you'll then wind up in the same position you would be as when you take your 1150 back plate. Put it into place and as you can see you've then got the threaded bolt sticking through so we're going to move from there on here and put the four spacers on and take your retention brackets into place make sure the curve is going away from the cpu And four caps go on. That's going to be the same on 2011 as well as the 1156. Like I said, when you've got the bolts coming through there, it becomes the same. Once we get all four tightened down, we'll take a look at how the actual towers mount. Now, with that in place, you've got the two bolts sticking out of the retention brackets, two nuts with screws right in the center. Make sure you've got your offset set the right way so it's actually towards the up a bit and just set it into place. Typically, you would want to put your thermal material on, thermal interface material on. Prior to setting this up, you need the thermal interface material, but since we're just doing a test fit here, I'm actually not using any at the moment. Once it's on, simply tighten up the two screws. They do have a stop. Get the top one started. Then get your bottom one started. And alternate back and forth, tightening up each one up a little bit as you go along. Until you feel the stop. You don't want to over tighten. When you feel the stop, stop turning the screwdriver. It'll be a very, very apparent stop. It's not going to be uh, one of those things where it starts getting hard and, you know, 
it feels like it's getting a little harder, it will abruptly stop when you bottom out. And with that, towers in place. Simply pop in your fan with the clips. And you're all set. So very, very quick, easy installation on the 15S. Once it's installed, the offset of the 15S is very, very noticeable. Uh, especially if you've used uh, an NHD 15 before, you definitely uh, notice it right off the bat. Sits much higher from the GPU, clearly cl uh, clears the first PCI Express slot back here. And also up front, without the fan, you've got that 65 millimeters of clearance for the RAM in front as well as in the rear for using uh, an X99 board. Taking a look at the performance, first we're going to start with the 4770K, it's stock speeds. Uh, it's really not going to challenge any of the coolers in this test as you see here. Pretty much the same performance across the board. Only thing that sticks out whatsoever is the fact that the uh, CLC runs about 20 dB louder than any of the other coolers in the test. Now you take a look at the uh, 15S. With single or dual fan, just about the same performance. Uh, performs essentially identically to the uh, D15, and it is only 31 dB, one of the quietest coolers out there. Now, we're going to bump things up to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts, and you see the uh, 15S performs exactly like a D15. To add the two fans, they're the, exactly the same cooler in terms of performance. Uh, missing the one fan, it performs exactly like a D15 minus one fan, two degrees off. So you're getting really spectacular performance from something that's compatible. Uh, now, once again, you know, of course, the big thing uh, as far as compatibility uh, type coolers for an enthusiast is going to be against a CLC. We've got the H100i GTX in there as probably the best 240 millimeter out there right now in terms of performance, you know, along with the Nepton 240M. And, um, you know, you're a couple degrees off from the uh, H100i GTX, but you're also 27 dB quieter. Now, when you quiet down the H100i G, uh, GTX just to 40 dB, which is still 9 dB louder, you're three, uh, three degrees higher. So it's really outperforming. I mean, out of the box, you're not going to get a better cooling solution than you are with the D15 or D15S unless you go into an open loop solution. You know, if there was ever a case where more of the same would be a good thing, it would be with the NHD 15. The NHD 15 is really a miraculous unit. There's no question about that. And what they've done here with the 15S is, you know, giving you more of the same. The NHD 15S is an NHD 15 for all intents and purposes. Um, they've just made it so it's more compatible. So you're still getting same fins, same fin arrays, uh, same six heat pipes, same impeccable build quality, same NFA P, uh, 15 fan. Um, same performance, same quiet, everything, you know, that comes with the NHD 15, you're getting more of the same with the NHD 15S, only now you're getting it in a form factor that's going to be able to be used in an ITX motherboard and not block that first PCI slot. Um, really nothing more you could ask for from Noctua here. This is really just about a perfect piece as far as air coolers go. If you're looking for an enthusiast cooler uh, that can go into a smaller form factor build and on an ITX board, really nothing more you could have asked for from Noctua here. And obviously uh, going to take home a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award. And really, if you're an enthusiast with an ITX piece, there's no reason to look any further. This is the way you want to go. It is the best performing cooler that you can put on an ITX motherboard that is going to clear the first uh, PCI Express slot. No question about that. Nothing else comes close.